Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Dugmore, not to praise him. Love podcasts, hate nonsense, it's Paul's Joe podcast. Was that the bit? Rome has fallen. Has he, it? He's gone. Has it? He's out. Oh, this the is bit is he's gone. It's yes. not a bit, it's fact. Yeah, it, it's true actually, because listeners of yesterday's podcast will remember that Ollie said he wasn't off today. Yes, and he lied. He's got, he's, well, he didn't know that actually. You there put was, him away. There was a violent coup. He's mm. been sent to Cornwall. Yeah. This is all, I've not actually listened to the two episodes that you guys did. I've seen snatches of the bits. Snatch? Do you not I've snatch? Just seen <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was looking up snatch in my spare time. There's when I was on holiday, and I did. I, I you had to look together. up snatch. Yeah, no idea what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you search for? <laughs> snatch. <laughs> <laughs> Into Google. Snatch. Oh, <laughs> show me snatch. <laughs> that was good though. Um, Hat today. Not here. Hat today. Yes. Hat today. Yeah. What? Well, you know, it's just George Galloway takes his hat off when he goes into the chamber. Is you don't revere the studio in the same way. You <laughs> no, the I, believe it or not, I don't revere the studio <laughs> in the same way one might the House of Commons. Mm. You're wearing good shoes today. Thank you. For, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. Look at that. Yep. Fans of Taylor Swift will know that she also has those shoes and she wore them at the end of her uh, Melbourne tour. That's. Is that, is that what being a Taylor Swift fan is? What, knowing what shoes she wears? But like to that most in, like insane level of detail. I just happened to notice it, that was all. Okay. I thought, oh look, Ed's shoes. <laughs> okay, that actually makes more sense. Yeah. I thought this was like a requirement. I look at a lot of her shoes. <laughs> well, that's what sort of, well, I, had, I had to ask. Um, mm. How are you? How's it been since I've been away? Oh, it's been so good, man. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, when I go on holiday, I don't look at the news very often, mm. ever. So I feel, I, feel, I feel quite at sea. We missed you. Oh, that's very nice. Mm, we did. Thank you. We talked about you a lot. Oh, I, uh, yeah, I think I got the impression with all the memes about me going to Cornwall. Do you know what was quite funny? I was just looking on Reddit before we started this. And there's Timbo2023. He did a really good breakdown of what has been going on on the podcast. Okay. And it actually reminded me of what, where this all started. He just did a really nice little synopsis of where Ollie and Ed went to see June. Ava got more annoyed at the boys, derailing every episode to talk about June. In a surprise twist, Ed stabbed Ollie in the back halfway through an episode and sided with Ava, leading to an eventual claim that Ollie would get sent to prison for nonsense. <laughs> 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 Cut to this week, and during an attempt to wind Ollie up, Ava reveals a secret Paul Joe Slack chat channel that Ollie isn't in. Ollie reacts to this in a calm and measured manner by threatening to end Ava and have Ed sent to Cornwall. <laughs> and look who's won. Look who's one, look who's back. It's mm. the platonic ideal of the Politics Show podcast. The platonic ideal? Yeah. This you, is this is what peak male performance looks like. Absolutely. You and me, no Ollie. Yeah. No subpar. There's more testosterone than usual, isn't Definitely. it? Definitely. He's got negative energy. Yeah, he has, yeah. <laughs> What's it called when someone has negative charisma? <laughs> <laughs> it's a charisma vacuum. Shall we do some some podcasting? All right. What should, we, shall, what should we start with? Should we start with the new governmental... Appointments. Yes, a fantastic appointment has been made. Can you can you expand on that, please? John, well, two ministers resigned yesterday: Robert Halfen and James Heapy, and they also announced that they were standing down at the next election. Jonathan Gullis. Oh yeah. Who uh, a bastion of free speech? <laughs> uh, <laughs> the man of speaking freely. The man with all of the chat and none of the substance has been made deputy chairman of the Conservative Party. And, you know, I'm so thrilled about it. I'm thinking about voting reform. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Well, you're going to do that anyway. Uh, well, yeah. But yeah, this yeah. just to reinforce your decision. Do you know, Sean actually saw something so cringe from Labour the other day. That uh -huh. He actually shouted at the desk, fuck this, I'm voting reform. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Uh, was it the chicken thing, Sean? Ah, Jonathan um. Ashworth with a, with a, a, had a bet with Kay Burley that the election would be in May, wrong. Um, and she, he, said, he said something like, what was it? So they bet a tenner. They bet a, ten, they bet a tenner. He hands it to, yeah. Go on. He Speak. Donated to like children of alcoholics. Yeah. 
Okay. If you can't hear it, he donated ten pounds to a Children of Alcoholics charity. And that and Sean objected to that. On the check, there was a big picture of a chicken. Right. It was a bit. T- it was a bit tasteless. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think the the, t- the labour chicken thing is one of the most cringe things I've ever seen. I don't in my know life. what they're doing that for. It's like oh, really old school. It's like old old school tabloid. You know that like the mirror chicken. The thing? mirror chicken. People, yeah. It's, it's when. <laughs> it's, when, it's when in the 80s and 90s when media was, was crap, when you couldn't watch literally whatever you wanted whenever and people had to just take what they were given. No, the media, the, the, the mirror chicken was funny at the time. But that's because there was nothing else. No, because it, when no one's done that before, objectively, to get, to get someone dressed in a chicken suit to run around and <laughs> like, like okay, yeah. ambush politicians, that is quite funny. <laughs> okay, it is quite funny. And you know who was in the mirror suit, the, in the chicken suit? Ask Campbell. Uh, Lee Kane. Really? Yeah, former ah. director of communications for Boris Johnson. I see about old media, mm. like pre-streaming, etc. Did you watch that Netflix documentary about Joe Dando? <laughs> no. Okay, so about Joe Dando being like, Joe Dando, <laughs> Jill Dando was the most famous TV presenter like in the UK. She was a darling of the media. And they were giving examples of things she presented. And one was like, <laughs> she was on some cruise ship, I think, at a ball... And the surprise was that Cliff Richard was there. And that was like premium entertainment in like nineteen in the 1990s. Just to be clear, we're laughing at a woman who was brutally murdered on her front That's step. That's not why I'm laughing at her. R- oh, what are you laughing at? That that was considered premium entertainment. What, that she was murdered on her front doorstep? <laughs> <laughs> no. Again, it's like you're not listening to me. <laughs> you're, you're doing bad faith interpretation. <laughs> I think it's, I think Me? <laughs> I think if your prime time viewing is Cliff Richard slow dancing on a cruise ship, you might open up your paper, see the chicken thing and and cackle your head off. But if you can watch anything all points, I think we've moved yeah, beyond like June. that. Yeah. Oh my god, if you new June. Yeah. Oh my god, Do you think the exalted. sandworm has a snatch? <laughs> Now we're getting into it. <laughs> yes, uh, it's, but it's got like it, it's be cavernous. Cavernous. It'll be huge. So you're slut shaming the sandworm. No, <laughs> it's not slut. It's what saying you've got a huge vagina. Is that implying that you're like? Can you not comment perfect? on my vagina, please? <laughs> okay. No, you get like quite like you get you get the audience gives you a real pass. It's like Ed and Ollie have derailed the podcast again. <laughs> You just feel like, ah, the sandworm has a snatch! <laughs> Jonathan Gullis. Jonathan Gullis, speaking of sandworm snatches. <laughs> yeah, why don't you give us a few of his uh, controversial... Uh... Oh, where do I begin? Um, Opines. He said that Black Lives Matter was a Marxist organisation <laughs> that, <wants to> ab- <laughs> that wants to abolish the nuclear family. And defund the police. Okay, so one of those things is right. <laughs> how, how would you even go about <laughs> abolishing the nuclear family? <laughs> what does that even mean? Nuclear family is mum, dad, son, daughter. Yeah. So two sons. Well, it's two, it's two kids, two parents, isn't it? Yeah, so any more than that. So the, he wants to enforce, so he's in favour of like, a two-child policy, and that's it. Oh, I suppose they are with a two-child benefit cap. Yeah, actually. So they want. To, so Black Lives Matter want to undo the two-child benefit. But by cap. that rationale, we've become China. Yep. We've got a two-child policy. Yep. What's that about? What the bloody fuck? God, you know, communism really does fuck you by the back door. <laughs> that is that saying? Which is what you should be doing after your second child. <laughs> Because of your cavernous sandworm vagina. Preventative. We we need two children, no more. (laughs) Yeah, this is a... We endorse... Backdoor sandworm only. We are only pro-contraception if it's anal sex. (laughs) Yeah. We're not in favour of any other. No snatch, just backlatch. (laughs) (laughs) I think these are funnier when we... We're, we're a little bit hungover. So last night, a few of us went to 
this Guinness event that was in Westminster. Guinness are going to be so pleased that, that we're talking about it in this vein. Um, I wasn't there for it. Anyway, so there was like a lot of different journalists Clarity. in teams and we totally misread the room about like what we should call the team, <laughs> what the team name should be. <laughs> so like they they started reading out like the names of the teams that were competing and it was like, they were like, ah, The Sun, The Daily Mail, <laughs> The Mirror. And then <laughs> we're like... Oh, God, no, <laughs> no, we've totally got this wrong. And we went for APPG on Bridges. <laughs> so the same day as the tragic incident in Baltimore, <laughs> you were making light of, of all things, an infrastructure <laughs> error, which for you Can is we blasphemous, surely. When that name was read out, a woman shouted, that's not funny. <laughs> I think I think it speaking of <coughs> infrastructure like the red wall that's not good sorry this, I'm trying to I'm trying to keep this on Yeah who built the that rails. same bloke who built the Baltimore bridge am I right <laughs> Well it wasn't it's to, coming yeah, but, down no, the, the Baltimore bridge wasn't a, it wasn't a structural issue <laughs> What do you mean something sealed into it Yeah but that is a structural issue Well it can't be expected to withstand a container ship I actually think it should be. I don't think that the entire... Did you see how it collapsed? Like, so, sorry. <laughs> I've, uh, Are you part of the APPG? I've actually, <laughs> <laughs> I've actually heard Nina Simone's Baltimore, so I'm qualified to talk on this. Um, <laughs> half of it, just, just, just... Okay, this is what we were talking about yesterday. The shard, right? You yeah. know how it's got like four big plinths at the bottom of mm -hmm. it? If one of those plinths were to fail, mm -hmm. you wouldn't expect the entire building to come down. No, but you would if a container ship sailed into it. Yeah, but... Okay, okay, the probability of a container ship <laughs> sailing into <laughs> the shard <laughs> is very low. Versus very low. a bridge. Okay. You would have thought there would have been some kind of structure that, like, you know, if one side were to collapse half of it, then the other half would be all right. But. So, but then, but then be, that would be redundant because the bridge would still be inoperable. No, but it would, it, there would be less people dead, is what I'm talking about. It would, been, it would have been safer. You would have thought there would have been a catch. You know, a safety mechanism. A net. That wouldn't just mean like... Because it kind of fell like a house of cards. Mm -hmm. You know? Built in 1977, that bridge. Which, of course, is right when Baltimore was taking its downturn. A lot of industry was leaving. I don't know enough about Baltimore. Well, I'm telling you. So, <laughs> when industry was leaving, they Home obviously of took Edgar the Allan Poe? with them. Edgar, uh, Edgar Allan Poe? Yep. Well, you know, the Raven. Yes. The All Baltimore over that Raven. bridge. Yeah. The Baltimore Orioles. Yeah. Anyway, should we go back? Yes. Can we talk about the red wall? So wait, can you can you read out this? Can you read out one of the other ones? Um, can you read? Can you read the third one, please? Third one. Of course I can. Um, so this is another thing our good friend Mr. Gullis said in May 2022 regarding the Home Office deportation flights. Jonathan Gullis said his constituents were flabbergasted that the woke, wet, and wobbly lot opposite are on the side of their lefty woke warriors. Who are making sure these rapists and pedophiles <laughs> remain in this United Kingdom rather than standing up for the British people <laughs> and their safety. So the implication there is that the Labour Party are letting loose rapists and pedophiles. Well, they shouldn't be doing that, should they? Oh, really? no, I agree. Someone should, someone should be talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God he's there. Yeah, someone do should that. do something about this. Why on earth would Rishi Sunak and the Conservative hierarchy want, want this guy involved? Well, he's Lee Anderson adjacent, isn't he? Is that as much of a benefit as they seem to think it is? I'm not sure. There's really good videos, footage of him, sorry, in the chamber during PMQs when he's roaring. Gullets. Yeah. And it's, it's a hard watch. <laughs> it's, really, it's really awful. Do you hear an, uh, an unsubstantiated rumour I heard about Jonathan Gallus. Yeah, well, well, why not? Put it here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a comment on Reddit that said... No, don't, don't be libeling. It's not libel, I don't think. Well, we'll caveat I think you should be sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can see. We can Jonathan, beep it out. Seemingly, Jonathan Gallus was a teacher and he got really angry once because someone photoshopped his head onto a seagull and put it around the school saying, Jonathan Seagullus. <laughs> <laughs> he completely <laughs> lost his mind. <laughs> <laughs> but do do we think he's will he steer the conservatives to winning ways yeah i think what they'll do jonathan gullis will really be able to 
to um, to speak for the people who are not spoken for. Um, people with head injuries. People who hate paedophiles, for example. <laughs> I'm the only MP in this entire place who hates pedophiles. Red Wall, I'll get it back oh. on my one policy platform, anti pedophile. Anti pedophile. The implication being that everyone else is pro pedophile. Look, I look. I don't know. I'm not in. Pol- I'm not. You know. What could I possibly say? I'm not an elected politician. Yeah, I'm not an elected politician. Um, you and you know, he's going to really. I, I think he'll galvanise the nuclear family. <laughs> are they is that a big union movement that I've not heard of the campaign for sons and daughters of mothers and fathers I guess it is if you listen to Mims Davies no not Mims Davies Miriam Cates yes but you, you needn't do that but do you know what's quite funny is the idea of like at the National Conservative Party conference mm. not the Conservative Party National Conservatism yes. conference that Jonathan Gullis would be the speaker that you put up there <laughs> to be like this guy gets Did you see who is doing family it? values Did you see who's doing it who is it you I wish are you on, on the panel for balance <laughs> <laughs> have to be, they'd have to give me a lot of air time to balance <laughs> um, it's uh, Victor Orban and Suela, Suela. <laughs> Is it, is it, it's in like three weeks in Brussels. <laughs> Sick. Isn't that insane? Do you know one thing I actually wanted to talk about with Gullis was um, one of his aims that he put in his announcement that he's honoured, you know, honoured to become the deputy chairman. One of his big aims, by sticking to the plan, will grow the economy, stop the bo- boats and level up across the country. Now, the stop the boats thing was interesting to me because I was watching Suella Braverman on a documentary that Ros Atkins has done for the BBC about immigration. And Suella Braverman was talking about how she was um she couldn't get she couldn't get an appointment with Rishi Sunak. So Suella, very anti immigration, wanted mm-hmm. to uh, you know, put the put the moat up, whatever. Um and she felt that Sunak was just not getting it, that she couldn't get an appointment with him. Some of the replies that she got from him when she was putting in for um, you know, a request to bolster policy when she was um home office minister were written he just had no interest in engaging with her whatsoever Mm -hmm. and what she argues is she wasn't able to bring down immigration because there's a prime minister who doesn't prioritize it that's what she was arguing so jonathan gullis talking about stopping the boats as one of his big pledges well he's going to run into the same issues that swella braverman ran into when she was secretary of state and deputy chairman of the party is going to have far less sway mm-hmm. than someone like the, the secretary yeah, of state. Yeah, I wonder how much to believe Suela there, to be honest with you, because she's, if you're, <clears throat> if she's planning for the next proposed election, making a big swing for the leadership, mm-hmm. she can have it on record already that Sunak was not tough enough on immigration. I agree with you on that, that it's good politicking, but I would also say there was, there was a lot of... Um, there was a lot of talk that there was a complete breakdown of communication between mm. number 10 and the home office, particularly as well around um, processing, processing applications, mm. you know, because of, number 10 were sort of delaying the process or not allocating extra funding. And, you know, there are many reasons you could speculate about why they were doing that. But th- th- there is cause to believe that they weren't communicating properly. So, something else about Jonathan Gullis, very likely to lose a seat. Electoral calculus has it that Labour are ninety six percent chance of winning in that seat. That's pretty high, that. So seems. So he's only got six months left. Do you think it's a case of no one else wants it? Poison chalice. Who wants it? <laughs> it's my turn. Um, that's sort of sad because he'll have no seat, but he'll have been acting like Vera Lynn for most of the, <laughs> <laughs> the election. <laughs> this swan song's going to be awful. Oh, it's going to be really, really. There was a good one about. Um, it was Mr. Hans, former, <laughs> former chairman of the Conservative Party. I can't ever handle you talking about Mr. Hans. <laughs> um, Greg Hans, the, mem- the member for Chelsea and Fulham. And not the guy in America who got done for bestiality. <laughs> not him, famously not him. Um, complete coincidence. <laughs> Do you think there was some nominative determinism in his name being Mr. Hans? Who? The As American guy. Hans. The American guy. No, the guy's name wasn't Mr. Hans. Oh. Just the video was called Mr. Hans. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, if his name was Tom Hands, we would be good at all. We have to be polite. <laughs> or his name was, like, Pig Fucker. <laughs> or Shagger. Yeah. Um, but speaking of our Mr. Hands, <laughs> Gregory, he tweeted today, it was just really good, like, bullshit stuff. He was in a cafe in Chelsea, I think, being like, what the bloody fuck is a blueberry user? Bring back the Chelsea bun. <laughs> <laughs> this is what gone mad. What is a blueberry user? It was like just a fa- it looked like a fancy cake. It looked a quite fancy- tasty. It was just like oh god, you know. I tell you, if you can't even buy it was a Leon, fancy- it was in a Leon. In a Leon, if you can't even buy a fancy cake in Chelsea, yeah, yeah, yeah. where can You're you really, buy one? Really misunderstand- <laughs> You're really misunderstanding. You know what? You know what this borough is full of: Chelsea and Fulham, hardworking Red Wall voters. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jonathan- why I'm here with our good friends, Jonathan and Lee. <laughs> Jonathan, who really, out. really understand. Um, the paedophile buns in Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> a labour endorsed paedophile <laughs> buns. <laughs> this is a deep cans London. It's <laughs> giving paedophiles buns. <laughs> Not bums. <laughs> buns. Bums would be worse. <laughs> There's like a typo from CCHQ. <laughs> no! <laughs> it's giving paedophiles bums. That might be something. That's what they wanted. That might be something that might crop up in the Tories' <laughs> next attack video on Sadiq Khan. We might have given them ammo. Do you know? I didn't even tweet that ridiculous video from CCHQ about London because I actually thought it was fake. Did you? It was so bad. It's, it's insane. It was like who video edited this? Like someone on fucking PowerPoint. Oh, like, I just didn't object to the editing of it. I thought the editing was actually quite good. Okay, can I actually just briefly talk about Ed Hemp? Ed really cares about editing, so that is a really high compliment. <laughs> <laughs> so I like. Did you make it? <laughs> yeah, that did actually. I'm moonlighting. Well, I think it really frustrates me when political parties do bad social content. Yeah, it's quite basic. And if they do like, I don't know, ch- chicken stuff, Labour doing that stunt with all the chickens outside Downing Street, I think that's stupid and dumb. But tell you what, a complete, <laughs> a missing. <laughs> An act of total misinformation implying that Sadiq Khan is enabling you les patrol to beat up your grannies and she's fair, she's scared to go out of her house. That's okay, as long as it's smartly edited. Mm. As long as the sound design is, is decent. Yeah. Um, they really... Um, they had a lot of gall there, didn't they? Because I do believe it was Boris Johnson who um, closed a lot of the police stations. Yes. Do you know what's also... When he was mayor of London. I think it's quite easy... Crime. See, see, because we know that that's not true. What I just said. As in that, like, the whole London is Gotham. Yeah. And, and we need Batman. You're sick if it was, though. <laughs> I don't think it would be. Gotham doesn't seem like a good place to live. Oh, I'd quite like it. It's like, no. We, we could, I'd we, default to how I told you I would act in prison. <laughs> <laughs> you trapped in, like... Bane's prison. You trying to negotiate with Bane? <laughs> Who? Oh, I've not seen the Dark Knight. Do, do I look like I've seen the Dark Knight? Yes, you do. Everyone's seen it. Ev- Laura, have you seen it? I have seen it. Oh, for yes. God's sake! Uh-huh. She's getting on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> you not see, have you not seen Batman Begins or the Dark Knight or the Dark Knight? No, Rises? but I did used to live in Chicago, opposite that building that Batman was on. What? Wasn't Batman on a? They set Gotham in Chicago. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, they filmed it in Chicago or whatever. They filmed it more, the more recent one in Glasgow as well. Yeah, well, that's... Which, yeah, which, yeah, it does say a lot. Mm. But also really took, takes you out of it. There's a scene at the end where he's driving out of a cemetery and you're like, oh, that's the Necropolis. Oh, <laughs> I can't suspend my disbelief anymore. Oh, it's not real. Oh, it's not real. Not that like man's Harry, not real. Not like Harry Potter, no. hey? <laughs> did you send that little... That, did you not? Oh. What, was Laura being rude? Laura, no, no, no. She was going to reply to you with something last night. And then she actually said to me, should I send that? And I was like, yeah. And she didn't. Okay, we'll have words about that. Coward. <laughs> Post record. Um, She's just getting, like, I don't know why I've, why I've turned on you. I can't, I'm losing here. <laughs> so, because <laughs> <laughs> so, we know London isn't Gotham. And we know that, it's, <laughs> and we know that it's not this, like, crime ridden thing. It's quite easy to dismiss this and to laugh at this because it is, it is ridiculous but I also do think things like this are quite dangerous as in you are just lying about you les you les patrols keeping everyone inside and you would think if you were to trust the conservative party as a source of information 
I think you'd be quite within your rights to do that. You, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't expect a political party to lie about something on its own social media channel. Yeah. So I think, I think the consequences of this could be quite... Just quite, quite dangerous almost like Sadiq, Sadiq Khan lives with 24 hour security and you're being told that he's responsible for overseeing crime giving criminals free reign if you're conspiracy minded you might want to take matters into your own hands it's also indicative of the short termism that this government is obsessed or this mm. is obsessed with CCHQ because that sort of advert for London not very good for tourism <laughs> anyone abroad looks at that they're not going to go, they're going to go, oh yep. my God, what happened to London? I'm not <laughs> going there. Also, we were, so under our government, we allowed the capital city where our government is based to, be, to become like a fiefdom <laughs> of, of, of this. crime. <laughs> where they all work, <laughs> of, by the way. <laughs> they all work. Yeah, they all live and work here. Yeah. Of the, like, so you're implying <laughs> that you've, you've somehow failed to stop an Islamic takeover of London where everyone is based it's the most important city in the country and you've done nothing to stop it. Yeah. It's like that hot dog meme, but instead it's the Shard and the Baltimore Bridge and he's yelling jihad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Listeners, you've all got a visual imagination. You see... Can you draw what you think that meme looks like? <laughs> and then can you also explain it to me? Because <laughs> I don't really get that. <laughs> there was quite... Me a, neither. <laughs> <laughs> there was quite a lot of... Some conservatives were quite quick to disavow themselves of that, but those bits of content, there's one about Birmingham, one about London, dismissing it. I think one London Assembly member said it was like, oh, some intern at HQ has gone rogue. Interns don't get to descript and edit 90 second bits of social content that go out on the main social channel. Yeah, there's a bit of discussion before commission. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get some budget? Yeah. Can I? I've written a short film. I'm here as an unpaid intern can i get some budget to make this i'm going to chelsea <laughs> i've heard about these bums <laughs> oh I, there's a lot of blueberry bums in Greg chelsea. Hans is all over this uh, mr hans has commissioned this but i think it's, it's it's so disingenuous to be like oh no this is wrong in public but lapping up the hoping, hoping to reap what is sown by it as in it'd be good for them if everyone was suddenly scared of Labour and thought they were all uh, criminal enabling terrorists. Yeah, well, I tell you, the alternative to Sadiq Khan, I do look at Susan Hall and I, it does fill me with confidence. Really? What do you like about yeah. her? Well, I mean, what I liked about her was that she, um, she privatised theft. She privatised theft? <laughs> what does that mean? She, uh, instead of outsourcing it to a criminal, she mm -hmm. actually did it herself. She when she lost her own wallet. Oh, that's true, actually. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what she did say? Which I think is incredibly dangerous and actually quite indicative of how the Conservatives are treating mm. London. She said that London Jews are scared of Sadiq Khan. That's, that's libelous, actually. It's, it's, it's atrocious. That's an appalling thing to say. Yeah, and it, and it, it shows that they're like... That's actually... That's, that's appalling. It's, it's so That's I horrific. would say that's up there with... The Islamist comment made by Lee Anderson, actually. Yeah, and she's still and she's still running. She's still the candidate for yeah. I, that's, premier. That's I did not know she said that. That is appalling. It's absolutely it's appalling, and it shows that for all the talk about oh, kinder, gentler politics, whatever stand up said. Well, you said the, the deputy leader said that we're scum. Yeah, you said these, that Jews are frightened of Sadiq Khan. Also, not great. It's also it's actually demonstrably not true. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Obviously. There's also, I think, people don't really reckon with how this m stream of misinformation, disinformation can actually affect real life. Not just in a voting sense, but there was that guy who beheaded his dad on a YouTube live stream because he was scared of the deep state. Well, wait till he, wait till he watches <laughs> the liaison <laughs> committee. Yeah, wait till he watches the liaison committee. Did you, did you know that yesterday, uh, William Ragg asked Rishi Sunak if he is a member of the deep state? Or if Liz Truss is a member of the deep state. And what does he say? Well, I wouldn't tell you if I was. <laughs> I'm not joking. And then they started talking about the Garrett Club. I think that's something that you should... Because that's where the deep state would put themselves. The Garrett Club. What do you think of the Garrett Club stuff? There'll be no women in the deep state. And that's a good thing? Huh? Is that a good thing? 
Yeah. It's too child policy, Ed. <laughs> <You> just... <laughs> what? <laughs> Look, if Jonathan Gullis can just say things, then why yeah, can't I? That's true, actually. <laughs> what do you think of the Garrett Club? Oh, coverage? we talked about this yesterday. Oh, sorry. Th- sorry. No, it's a, no, I'd actually like to hear your opinion on it. Go on, tell me. Feed it to me. Um, a private members club doesn't admit women. There's about 1,500 members. I think it's obviously a liberal to not admit admit women. Do I think it merits the amount of coverage that it's getting? Probably not. Mm. What do you think? Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I think it's really funny that people are squabbling like little rats over like whether women rats. should, yeah, <laughs> but over whether women should be allowed into this really elite club that, by the way, none of us are posh enough to be in. Yeah, like, I think, like no, listen, just be like, they don't want you in there. Not because you're a woman, but because you're poor. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Two the two the two worst things. Yeah. A poor woman. Yeah. I think it's it, question. I, answer. Can you be? Can you can you be a waitress in there? I don't know. Presumably. Because that would be that would real... that would be against quality equal opportunities or something. If they only hired male staff. Because that would be a really good feature. If I was commissioning a newspaper. I but someone who's a waitress in someone the Garrett Club. Someone went and, yeah. Some, I, I worked as a waitress in the Garrett Club. <sighs> was it? Yeah. I'd read the shit out of Would that. you? What would, what would they say? Some old, well, men, I don't know. old not, men sat around I'm and talked not, about being poor. No, I just, I, I bet there's probably this, probably some filthy stories in there, isn't there? I don't know. Yeah. Um, should we do sewage farmers? Please. What would you like to do? Sewage? Sewage. Would you run us up to date with... S- Sewage? What's going on with sewage as our sewage correspondent, the broadcaster of the shitting forecast? Yes. Uh, Fergal Sharkey. Actually made his name through sewage and not through the undertones. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, so figures by the Environment Agency published today show that 2023 was the worst year on record for raw sewage spills in England. England's rivers and seas endured 3.6 million hours of untreated sewage sewage discharges by water companies in 2023 compared to 1.75 million hours in 2022. Now, by my, my maths, I'd say that's more than doubled. Good maths, yeah. Um, water firm, firms have blamed record rainfall. I mean, because... <laughs> but, well, yeah, because actually when there's more rain, the country shits more. True, actually. It's... Don't ask me, ask Mr. Hans. He's in charge of, <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> You're just saying things. Yeah. Okay, I quite like it. I think, um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Do you want me to say less things? Well, no, I just, I'd, I, I would like to follow your train of thought. Why? So I can join in. Yeah. But if you're just lurching off and I can't even see where the joke's coming from. Not a lot of rhyme or rhythm with a sandworm though, is there? And that's who I'm channeling today. <laughs> <laughs> yep, sandworms snatch. Yep. <laughs> For the listeners, Ava was thumping the table like you would if you wanted to ride a sandworm in June. <laughs> um, so, I suppose if there's more rainfall, would that not dilute the levels of sewage? <clears throat> or yeah, is the but I, I think I think. I think you don't want the shit in there in the first place. Good point. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, no, that is. Um, but there's loads of reasons why this is happening. Like we used to, you know, namely the EU. Thanks to Brexit, we can now shit in our rivers. Do you think you can just go without a toilet and just shit in the rivers and that's fine? I don't know, but it would probably be like that one guy who got a fine from the council because he put posts from his house into a public bin. What? Do you know that story? I don't understand. No, I don't. There was this guy, yeah, he, he, this, this officer saw him take posts like, that had been put through his front door and he walked straight out of his house and put it into a public bin and he got a fine. Um, and what I'm thinking is a big company can dump shit in, but I think if you went personally to shit in the river, I think you'd get a fine. It's actually, it's really biased against small to medium enterprise owners. Yeah. They can't, you can't just collect your neighbor's shit and put mm-hmm. it straight in the... In, it has to be go through the, the big water companies. Yeah. Which I think is anti-capitalist. I would say so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Marxist even. That is actually Marxist. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the breakdown. Yeah. Well, I just want to take my wife and my two children straight to the river to shit in as my, is my God-given right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I, I think that people are, people are so angry about this. It's disgusting. But it is disgusting. And it's, it's so emotive, mm-hmm. the story, because the, the image of feces being in a river oh, is vile. just totally vile. vile. Um, and then you start... The, the thing, though, who re- the, the people who really get off the hook, I mean, not only the government, because it's actually obscene how much they get away with and are even um, permitting it, encouraging it, you mm-hmm. could even argue. But the water companies who who just j- just have no care whatsoever, no. so driven by profit, that I, I have no idea why water, which is a product that doesn't change you can't get a better version of water coming out of your tap no depending on your provider you can't switch providers when you move into a house you get told your water's coming from thames southern water. or thames water yeah you just get told you're allocated it why is that not nationalized mm. How, why when why is that not under government control it's totally nuts also the knock-on effect of drew license made the point that people talk about um the Susan Rivers and people talk about people who swim in it, etc. Which probably quite a small proportion of the population actually go like while swimming in these spots or whatever. But an actual real real effect of it, not excuse me, that, not that it's not real. A wiser effect, knock on effect, it on it is people go to these places left to swim because they're fucking shit in the water. So that's a knock on effect on the economy, on the local economy. Oh really? In terms of shops, people yeah. like the cafe Ice cream at sellers. the. Yeah, ice cream sellers, whatever, has a real knock-on effect on everything else. So it's not just a nature thing, it's an, it's an economic thing as well, which is not great. I should you say the Lib Dems are all over this? The Lib yeah. Dems are using this as one of their key key policies mm. going into the election, is to stop the sewage. Yeah, it's quite a good one, to be fair. I think it's a good one too. Mm. I really think, I mean, I don't know why we're not writing. Why? Could you, could you not say that about a lot of things? Though? Yeah, we should, but yeah, I was thinking of like, a, li- a list suddenly came in front of my eyes. I was thinking of all the things that are terrible. But the, the point that you can actually jump, fe- uh, drop feces into rivers, mm-hmm. and, that's and that's fine. fine. Did, have you read that New York article about this is what the Tories have done to Britain? Yeah. It is, ble- for, if anyone hasn't read it or know what I'm talking about, don't pause the podcast now. Finish the podcast and then go and read this article. Because really, it's by Sam Knight in the New Yorker, basically like, this is what the Tories have done to Britain in 14 years and there seems to be no but I think my interpretation of it was why aren't we angry enough about this it's not it's not a polemic it's a really descriptive in in um, inquisitive step by step thing of just all the things that are worse now yeah because of the conservatives and it's really really awful I think everyone should read it to be honest we've really been ground down haven't we yeah it's just everything's a bit shit yeah but why because of the conservatives. But, mm, but what, who's going to pinpoint actually what the problem is? Like, because what, no one would deliberately enter government and you know, deliberately make things worse. Are they just totally crap at it? Actually, I think, that, I think they're totally... Obs- yeah, well, it's austerity, but also they're so totally obsessed with their own vanity that they don't really care about policy. So obsessed with how things look in the newspaper and how, how they appear personally mm-hmm. that they don't care. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't care about, you know, doing actually anything sensible, which I suppose is also, if you think about how often Secretary of State's are moved around departments for vanity reasons, you mm. know, it's all political infighting, why they're moved around. It means that civil servants haven't had a, like a normal, a regular minister, yeah. consistent minister for, for a really long time. Yeah. How do you get anything done? There was a, this, this, might, this might have come from that article, it might have come from something else, but I think the average tenure of a minister in Germany in the past, say it was 20 years, is six years in post. That's good. In in Britain, it's about 11 months. If you're lucky. If you're lucky, which is absolutely... And you just wonder why, why no one's... Why nothing works. I mean, think about when Gavin Williamson was education secretary. Like, oh, I God, could tell yeah. you not really a lot about policies that were implemented, but I could tell you that he had a tarantula that was on his desk called Cronus. Yeah. And that he was, you it's, know... It's the detail that's... It's what you do know that is like so trivial mm. and nothing and just has no correlation to their work in policy or anything mm. it's a real I think it's a it's a dereliction of duty it's kicking the teeth that isn't it isn't it like I know the f- fucking Gavin Williams' tarantula was called yeah I know that he's an absolute I would, I'd prefer to know what he did for schools 
And I could look that up. But why should I? <laughs> Eva, you were at far- you were with the farmers. Yes. What were the farmers doing? Protesting. Thank you. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> great discussion. What's what's going on with the farm? There's a go slow protest. There's going to be a video out probably tomorrow morning, maybe today, um, about what they were actually doing. But they drove their tractors from all around the country. So people came from Windsor, Winchester, Leicester, Deep Kent. Um, okay, so they all came from the south. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Just shallow Kent. Um, well, you know, you can't really expect them to drive a tractor that from takes like, you know. a, a really long time. There was a guy actually from West Yorkshire. That's far. No, it's quite far. But I think that he actually hitched a lift and then he borrowed a friend's tractor for the rest of it. So his heart wasn't really in it. His heart, do you know what? His tractor wasn't really in it. <laughs> um, the tractors. There's something so incredible. Sean, Sean gave me this thought. But um, something so out of place about a tractor being in a city yeah. environment. It just looks, it, it looks incredible. Yeah, it would do. Um, and these tractors go for, there was like one farmer who came up to me and was just telling me the price of each tractor. They are not cheap. <laughs> well, One of them was about half a million. What were they protesting? They had they had three things that they were protesting, but the main the main problem that they had was that um, politicians have put in too much red tape, and so they're not actually able to farm properly because there's so many rules and regulations that they now have to meet. So when we left the European Union, the big sell to the farmers was, we're going to rip up all the rules. You're going to be able to farm however you like. And actually they've put in a slew of environmental policies that means they are having to shell out for um, a new tractor that meets requirements, having to use different sorts of pesticides. And look, the arguments around whether that's right or wrong, let's just put that aside for one Mm -hmm. second. If you're growing things, say, in South Africa, and it's being shipped over here or it's being flown over here, your product will sit side by side in a big supermarket next to the British one Yep. um, for the same price. Mm -hmm. And so that means that that farmer in South Africa is making a much larger margin than a British farmer. Mm-hmm. And consumers don't care. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's putting a lot of people out of business. So what they're saying is it needs to be a level playing field. Like it's like, yeah, net zero, fine. But also level, you know, it, it's, got to be, it's got to be fair game. One other thing they were talking about is um, the government are paying them to rewild a lot of their fields if mm-hmm. they can't afford to do farming anymore. So they plant wildflowers or... Um, and they'll give them a one-off payment. It's like, okay, great, one-off payment. But this land has been used for 500 years for farming and it's kept my family, you know, mm-hmm. going for, you know, five centuries. So why would I want to just sell it off for a one, one-time payment and leave farming altogether? I suppose that's how transactions work. Like, why do you, would you want to sell anything? You're just getting I ra- suppose that is how <laughs> transactions work. <laughs> I think that's like, it's not your land anymore, I guess. Yeah. I guess that's why... You don't get to, like their tractor. Mm. What do you mean? I just get one-off payment for my tractor that I'm selling you? No, you know what they're talking about. I do. Though. Like I do. That, that's I... a that's a, a a bit of land is something that you can be regen. It's regenerative, right? So you, you're supposed to be using it all the time, and if you sell it off once, it's a bit of a waste of time, isn't it? But if you've like so, that hat, you could sell that. Do you recommend? Oh, that? sorry, that was a tangent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but like, I think I don't know if you're selling it, presu- presumably to the government to for a flower field. That's no longer your field. Is yeah, it's it? a flower field. It's a flower field. You can't, you can't. Um, sure. See the objection to the red tape. Mm. Would they like it if, say, the South African farmers had to meet their red tape? Yeah, up? I think. I think that what they were saying was it, it was just that it was so still. T- it was so tilted. Mm-hmm. It was, it's a completely tilted stage. Like you can, one farmer who sells into Waitrose. Mm-hmm was saying that you actually do not know that one, unless you're you really interested about where stuff comes from and you, you know the law you know l-o-r-e mm. um, <laughs> you, just to be clear. um you, then you then you'd know that south africans are flying in basically that one of them made a really good point where he was like look we're in an age where people really care about sustainability and they really care about the food that's being put into their body and government regulations are actually defying both of those things mm-hmm. so we're actually selling a lesser product to people like people don't want what we're supplying because it's got more air miles on it than it used yeah. to and also did you know that british if you've got british food as a label 
it's it's unlikely that the entire thing was made in Britain. Really? Yeah. So like a pork pie, for example, like 30% of that is British pork. And so that qualifies as a British meat product. That's bizarre. Uh, you'd, it is bizarre. You'd like to think that's all one pig. You, yes. Ideally. Best case scenario. Yeah. You don't eat meat. So you, you don't want like a what? You don't want like, like an a, amalgamation of like it's pretty. As in, I completely understand this is a ludicrous way to think about how you're meat not is produced. Poly porcarus? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> but as in, well, you'd like to think that I don't know. I, mean, I don't know if this applies to anything else but pork pies. But mince, say, beef for pork mince. Yeah. You'd like to think that's all one cow or one. I don't think it really works like that, is it? Mince? No, but as in, like I was like you'd like to think because it makes you feel like. Is less of a industry, I guess. But then I think you, if you eat meat, you have to reckon with how grim it is as an industry. Yeah, and, you, and I think you should you should be comfortable. I, people who are squeamish about, you know, when people are like, oh, I don't like thinking about the chicken wings that I'm eating are actually literally the wings of a chicken. Yeah, of like, say you have a portion of chicken wings, that's like five different chickens wings that you're Little eating. Little arms, yeah. Yeah, I think you have to be, be completely okay with that. I think I'm, being squeamish about that is is weak. I'm really pro um, regenerative, regenerative farming. Mm -hmm. You know, like cows that live quite happily. And then they eat the grass and then that's where you can also grow crops and the nutrients go back into the soil mm -hmm. and the cows eat them again. You know, I, I really like that kind of cycle and I do not object to that sort of meat at all. Yeah. Um, and that's the sort of meat that British farmers traditionally provide because they were talking about how this one guy was like, I'm an arable farmer. Um, you know, the care that we put into the cows, like the cows are like our um, like family members, you know, because he kills his family. Um, <laughs> um, he pumps his family for, for the hormones. But they don't, you see. <laughs> no, they, 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 that, that's the whole point is that they don't do that. They've got really like really careful practices he, and doctrines that they keeps follow. his wife in a constant state of breastfeeding. Yeah. <laughs> and sells her milk. Yeah. There'd be a lot of money in that. But <laughs> compared to the, the meat that's undercutting them, that is yeah. being flown in, and, and they're pointing out, like, look, th this meat is is fine, eat it, but it's not, like, you know, it's not good meat. Mm -hmm. um, and we've gone to all of the effort to make this fantastic meat, and then you kind of smash those two products together and label it as British food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the person who's provided the British part of that has made no profit on it. Yep. That's not fair. Changed. Do you like pork pies? I actually have never eaten a pork pie. Oh, good stuff. Do you know what's, what I was disappointed by with the tractor protest? Mm. There was no, they weren't spraying slurry all over the centre of London. They gave a reason for that. Was it criminal? I don't know how solid these facts are, but what they did say at, in the speech was that 25% of people in France either work in farming or work as a, like a, you know, around farming. Really? Like they're somehow connected to farming and so the people power is really strong. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the UK, it's only 1%. Or smaller. Yeah. I, don't, I, I, I haven't fact-checked them. That's just, that's, that's, so that's, the that's stats why they they're, they're able to be as angry. And it's yeah. Kind of fast. So if they see people back the farmers to spray shit all over the town centre. Well, thinking about the, the number of farmers yeah. that they can rally to go down there. You yeah. know? I think next time, though, let's, let's have a think about... You could release some actual chickens into the House of Commons instead of the weird labour thing. You could combine two protests at once and you could go and collect water from, like, the River Lee and then dump that in central <laughs> London. I think in terms of, like, comms, that might be muddling the message a little bit. Like. Well, you, no, well, well there's just water too! No, you could argue, because there's shit in the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could argue, so you're dumping shit, and then they're like, hey, you can't be dumping shit. And you'd be like, well, I got it out of your river. Yeah. It's I think, just water power. I think that's one for the for Fergal Sharky, not necessarily the farmers to do. Yeah. I think that would muddle the message. Yeah. Ever so slightly. Ivan, something I've just remembered. Hmm. I was doing a, I was like a forum thing for, um, it was basically charities having conversations with journalists about how to, pitch stories and someone from a right-wing newspaper i won't say which one gave the feedback to charities that were for um a charity for homeless people and a charity for refugees that it's very hard to make the average brit care about those things 
I think, in reality, it's hard to make their readership <laughs> care Do you know what's a lot easier to make them care about? What? We did a story today on Jeremy Vine about how one store in Lincolnshire put up a display, and instead of saying Easter eggs, he put up gesture eggs. Gesture eggs? Yeah. What does that mean? Well, apparently it's erasing Christianity. What? I don't know. I, just, I, I wasn't really too sure on that. So, the, this, the, com, the shopkeeper was angry... The shopkeeper put up a display. As, they, they, you've taken the Christianity out of Easter. No, 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 no. the shopkeeper put up a display that said gesture eggs right. to sell them. Right. Yeah. Um, and then someone's photographed that and sent it into a national newspaper. And the national newspaper has printed it up with, Disgusting! <laughs> These are Easter <laughs> eggs, not gesture eggs! <laughs> Jesus was on that crucifix eating a chocolate, chocolate egg! <laughs> It was filled to the brim <laughs> with cream eggs. Yeah. <laughs> His he last ate meal. Five cream eggs. <laughs> Too many. <laughs> His last meal was just the fondant that's in cream eggs. <laughs> As would fit the Son of God. You know what it was actually? Because you know what his last meal was? Was Mary Magdalene. Oh, fuck. <laughs> is that blasphemous? I'll be the judge of that. I don't mind if it. I don't mind if it is, but I just think. What I would, do you reckon, I, Sean? Like to know. Blasphemous. Sean, okay. I'd like to point out being ca- being Catholic, it doesn't make you the arbiter of what's ba- blasphemous or not. You only ask if you have a question about religion or Christianity. You only consult each other. <laughs> and also, neither of you are particularly religious. Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Pardon. Yeah. Your one's pretend. I don't have one. You, you went to the Church of Scotland or something? No, I didn't. You told me you did. No, I didn't. Or like, oh, because this gets this this could be a football thing. No, so it's we've not. got to be careful here. I'm, at, so I'm, I'm neither. <laughs> ah. Half Catholic, half, Pro- half Protestant. We exist. No, you don't. Yes. I, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what do, I, <laughs> do I not exist? I think I've just waded into a bit of an argument. <laughs> waded into a much bigger debate there than I meant to. <laughs> that was quite. That was quite. That was like a theological reaction. <laughs> the yeah. Santina d- jumped out there. I think I was a bit hungover on Jeremy Vine earlier because we had quite a sem- sensible debate about it. And then at one point, I actually heard. I actually heard myself say because the, the argument got so out of hand and so ridiculous, and I was saying to pe- callers like well you if you don't go to church and you're not a christian then why do you care mm-hmm. and then i think i said can't be sure that you know we made a concession in the 16th century that we would allow divorce <laughs> um <laughs> so i don't see why we can't have <laughs> a gesture <egg. laughs> and you, it had to be that, that you, makes sense. you're positioning yourself as a spokesperson for the catholic church I think I actually did say I don't think the Pope would care. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's true. I don't think the Pope would care. Yeah. He'd like, I think he'd like pe- more people to care. Well, I said the Pope would be wanting to bring more people into the Christian faith. He'd want, yeah. he'd, he'd, want to, he'd want more people to know about Jesus being on the cross. And if, that, <laughs> if that's through the medium of a gesture egg, then so be it. I think that's well, the one, people, one thing people do know about Easter is the cross thing. Yeah, and Christianity in general. It's Do you know, actually, that would be quite a good poll if people know that this is when Jesus died. <laughs> <laughs> what that? That I we're mean, a secular country. But what we're a secular country, so we're not allowed to know about religion. No, no, no. That people aren't being taught it because one of the big discussion points is that you can't you can't even say the word nativity anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. You actually can't say that. You can't say nativity. No. Where? Well, if you're not on normal court exercise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because it's about a baby, and it's in breach of your parole. No, because then it's yeah, yeah. That's actually good. <laughs> that's um. Well, if you, you if you kept turning up at the the local nativity, you couldn't if you were. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a convicted paedophile, there's a school that's like, don't say the word nativity because Simon just pops out of nowhere. <laughs> Where? <laughs> Comes running. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's on it's on like the children to not say the word it's not on like something to him to not come within the 200 meters of the school or whatever it's like that film what's that film with um john krasinski and his wife in it that he quiet wrote place. quiet place <laughs> but they just can't <laughs> <Materialized>. <laughs> if you <laughs> if 
if you say the word nativity. <laughs> Peter Falls. Peter Falls. <laughs> <laughs> were you ever in a nativity play? Yeah, I was, yeah. What did you play? The narrator. <laughs> I was the narrator really? as well, yeah. <laughs> Look at us. Yeah, there was, um, but there was lots of narrators. Because it was like one of them that everyone had a part. Oh, right. Yeah. Cute secular school, that is. <laughs> At the Catholic school, it was it was brutal. It was like really like guilty. It was like the Passion of Christ at your Catholic school. Can I actually just say that's just like really unlocked a core memory for me that we did used to act out the Stations of the Cross. <laughs> <laughs> so, so someone actually did go on the cross. That's so <laughs> Little great. Timmy on the cross. That was, that was quite traumatizing. Yeah, and then Mary goes up to wipe his face. But. Yeah, because he's been nailed to the cross, I know, Ed. I know. What? There's no, there's no nailing without blood. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we recommend taking the back door of a contraception. <laughs> oh. you, do you know what I watched recently, last night? This is like now Tangentville audience. Um, I've seen Gladiator recently. No. It doesn't hold up, is my... It's not very good. Gladiator? Yeah, not a great film. I thought you meant Gladiators that's on... Oh, no, BBC. No, 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 Sorry. No. I have seen this. Gladiator. That's a, I haven't watched it since I was about six, though. Yeah, don't. Great film. No. No? I watched it on Monday. Doesn't hold up. No. Oh. It's, it's, like, actively really bad in some bits. Really? Yeah. There's, like, a really weird shot that Ridley Scott keeps insisting on doing where Russell Crowe is being, like, moved. He's, like, on, like, a wagon or something. And it's, the shot is always, like, like, this part. And you can see it's like you can see the ground moving behind him, but it's really clearly been green screened, and, and it looks dreadful. So we're so we're not pro gladiator in this podcast anymore. It's made quite a long time ago, though, Ed. Yeah, but like, and you know, when we try to get too realistic, then you know, Alec Baldwin does something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> You're in constant danger of someone shooting someone on set. <laughs> you should have seen backstage at Barbie. Yeah, just people like <laughs> in fist fights. Yeah. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, I'd really like to go and get my jacket potato. Okay, Ava's been trying to go and get lunch for about two hours. Mm. Has been refusing. Um, thank you very much for it, Bruin. I thought that listening. was just a nice bit of colour for them. Yeah, gr- <laughs> I think this podcast is too much colour. <laughs> <laughs> they know so much about us. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you like- I think it's really nice. Oh, it's re- it is really nice. And I've been enjoying. The influx of memes on the subreddit. So go to r slash politics show and get involved. They know so much, but there. so little. So much, but so little. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Make sure to like and subscribe. I'm going to keep interrupting you every time you try to sign it off. And rate <laughs> us five stars on all podcast platforms. And leave us a review there as well. That'd be nice. Leave us a review there. Yeah. Wherever. Wherever you leave your reviews. Wherever you review podcasts on your blog. Yeah. Start a blog about podcasts and review this. <laughs> Start a blog about politics, Joe, and review Ed. I don't think I'd like that very much. <laughs> um, thank you very much for joining us again, Ava. Don't talk to me. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> bye, everybody. <laughs>